really kind of hard to believe, but the new modern imported lithium battery costs the same as these two lead acid batteries, and they both have the same amount of power. But this one lasts twice as long as these do. And in some cases, they last three times longer, depending on how you use it and how you maintain them. So go ahead and watch this video all the way to the end, and I will tell you how you can get one of these batteries, and you can get it for $20 off. This battery will go seven to 10 years. 15,000 cycles? I mean, it blows your mind how many times you can charge and discharge these lithium batteries. Hello again and welcome back to my channel. Well, I am back in the compartment of my travel trailer, my fifth wheel, and I want to talk about the battery on this. I've had a, a prior couple of videos that I did talking about the solar panel, talking about the batteries that I had, talking about a lithium battery, and I want to discuss a couple of things. One, this came with a single battery and a single tray that held that battery and then adding another battery or let's just change this and go to lithium so I want to do that today and as you've seen in this video the way it started out I'm going to put in lithium and I want to talk about all the benefits of switching over. so as you can see I have moved into the garage to get out of the cold <laughs> I was planning on doing this video at the fifth wheel, but I'm getting too cold out there. One of the things that really bothers me is the, the gases that these batteries give off on lead acid batteries. So I was looking at a sealed battery. Well, sealed batteries, they're kind of expensive. So I thought, well, if I'm going to spend that much money, maybe I want to go with a lithium battery. Well, the lithium battery was even more money. <laughs> So how much money do I want to spend to, to fix all this? A lead acid battery, whether it's an AGM battery, whether it's, it's a, a sealed battery, whether it's a gel battery, you still only can use half the amp hours of storage out of that battery. If you drop below 50% of the charge of the battery, you can damage those cells. So this is a 100 amp hour battery. I have two of them, that's 200 amp hours, but I can only use half of it, so I only can essentially use 100 amp hours. 100 amp hours in my fifth wheel trailer lasts about two days. The cost of a sealed battery or an AGM battery for two of them that only gets 100 amp hours of use is actually more expensive than one lithium battery and I get the same amount of usage out of it. That kind of blew my mind. It's like, wait a minute. So if I have a single lithium battery that has 100 amp hours that I can use 80% of that battery, I can go two days on a single lithium battery. I could go two days on two of these. Okay, well, and then another thing to think about, the battery boxes, the amount of space this takes up, and the gases this gives off. The lithium battery is sealed. It doesn't give off any gases. <laughs> And I only, if I only need one, I don't need to take up all the room. What does it weigh? Well, the lithium battery only weighs about 25 pounds. These two batteries weigh almost 100 pounds. So when I first started looking at this, the cost of the lithium batteries were three, 400 bucks for a single battery. They've come way down. I can get a lithium battery now for under 300 bucks. I just happen to be doing a few videos, travel trailer stuff, adding solar panels, looking at those kinds of options. 
a company, these guys reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to do a review on their battery. I would love to. So full disclosure, they sent me this, no charge, and said, just give us a fair rating, meaning do what you will with it and be honest about how you feel about it. Absolutely, I'd be willing to do that. So let's, let's dig this thing out and let, let's talk more in detail about all of this and, and how it all works. All right, well, let's start by unboxing this thing. We'll see what it looks like. Well, we got the fasteners, very well boxed. Nice foam to protect it from getting any damage. Right off the bat, it's very impressive looking battery. And the weight, uh, I believe this is right around 23 pounds. This one's right around 50. Uh, battery box wise, it will fit in the existing battery box if you do have a battery box similar to this. It does have the screw in terminals on the top. Instead of having posts, you're less likely to short it out or ground it on something, especially if you don't have it in a box, which I don't plan on having it covered. That's the beauty of going to this. I can put it in my front compartment, just flat inside the tray, strap it down, and I don't need to worry about it having all enclosed. I don't need all the hoses and venting like you do with the lead acid battery. Uh, this one, I haven't used it in probably four or five months, but I have been periodically charging it about every three, four weeks. I have a lithium battery that I've used that I've just set aside. It's been sitting for about six months and it's fully charged and I haven't touched it. But what's really cool about this battery is it has a smart BMS. It's, it's got all these <laughs> built-in electronic monitoring devices that is just fantastic. And unlike the lead acid battery, when I'm running this lead acid battery for two days and it gets cold at night and the heater kicks on and I've got a 12 volt refrigerator so the refrigerator is running during the day, I can easily discharge this too far. And if this battery drops below 50%, you're going to damage it. And if it drops down below 10 volts, which typically is in that 50% range, I can damage things in the trailer. Once it gets down and what I consider browning out, things start working quite as well because the voltage is too low. So, that's definitely a real drawback to the 12 volt when you start getting into electronics like 12 volt refrigerator that can easily be damaged. That's another thing that's just fantastic about the lithium battery is it holds 13 volts throughout the cycle. It's as high as 13.6 I believe and you get all the way down to 12 volts when the monitoring system shuts itself off because it's almost dead. Always have that really nice voltage throughout the span of the charge, which is so important with the electronics in some of these new trailers. So there are just so many ways this will pay for itself. And then on top of all that, I got lucky with these to get five, six years. That's pretty rare. I typically would get about three years, and most of the people I talk to average about three years out of a lead acid battery. This battery will go seven to 10 years. 
the cycles too. I don't know how many cycles I got in this to be able to get this much life out of it, but these 15,000 cycles, I mean, it blows your mind how many times you can charge and discharge these lithium batteries. So let's talk about the components inside of this battery. Um, one of the things I had read in the past, it was probably a year ago when I first started really looking seriously about the lithium batteries, um, the imported batteries, a lot of people were saying they were coming in the B-rated batteries. Basically, you get the very best cells and they rate them and you get your A ratings and your B ratings and your C ratings. A lot of people were saying, well, yeah, the, these overseas batteries are using the, the poor grade cells. And they take the best cells and they ship them to the United States and they make the best batteries. Lion battery, Battleborn, I mean, yeah, they're, they're fantastic batteries. They're certified A, A plus battery cells. I've been reading a lot of these imported batteries do have A cells. And there have been guys that have actually cut these open and have gone through all the testing. And they're finding the majority of these are, a very high percentage are A rated batteries. So you can feel comfortable about having a battery and knowing that it's going to have some longevity and hold up and not give out because it had a poor cell. I mean, you lose a cell, you, you lose the battery, but the same thing with the lead acid battery or any other battery. But I'm very comfortable in everything that I'm reading and, and looking into this particular battery, that it is really good quality. So part of the, the, the BMS is to be able to balance the cells as well so they all get evenly charged, evenly discharged. So one of the things that's really exciting about this battery that kind of sets it apart from the other batteries that I've looked at and the battery that I have been playing with is this has blue ticks. Now, my lead acid batteries, I, I bought a monitor that I put in my travel trailer so I could monitor what was going on with my battery. It would tell me um, my voltage, it would tell me my battery charge percentage wise, um, it would tell me how many amp hours I've used, how many amp hours I may have left. That little gauge is wonderful. Well, the Bluetooth on this goes beyond that. So here's a screenshot of the app um, that connects to the Bluetooth. At the top you can see this battery is currently at 48%. Uh, it's got some on and off features there that I'll have to read about to know more about. You can see the total voltage, 13.17. It'll show how much current is being used, whether it's being charged or discharged. It'll also show wattage. It's got the average voltage per cell. There's four cells, so you're 3.29 volts per cell. And then it shows the cycles. So this will be really interesting to watch. Right now, it has one cycle. So that's pretty interesting that it just has the one initial charge. And then what's really cool is to have the temperature. So you can watch the temperature range on the battery in both centigrade and Fahrenheit. It has other features here too. You can get into some technical controls with, with current calibration and voltage calibration, things that are over my head, but they'd be good to learn about. And it's just some really cool features about this app that you just can't get on a normal battery monitoring connect in your trailer. And it's certainly way beyond what I currently have. It's just wonderful to have all that access just right in my phone. And the app is free. I'll just scan the QR code, it pulled up the app, I loaded the app, and it told me all kinds of wonderful information about this battery. And at the price of this battery, I am just really surprised. When I got this battery, I figured, oh, it's not going to have Bluetooth. And some of them even have a little LED readout on the top. So you can look at, let's say you're using it for a trolling motor, and you can just glance at it. But the question has come up a lot in, in some of my research, some of the discussions. My travel trailer. 
I'm putting lithium batteries. I have a solar panel. Is my controller compatible with a lithium battery? Is my converter charger compatible with a lithium battery? Those are great questions. Well, my take is I looked at my travel trailer to see if my converter charger was lithium compatible. It is not. So then what does that mean for me? Do I need to upgrade it? Do I need to spend the money? Well, technically no. The built-in charger will charge the lithium battery, but it's made for charging the lead acid. The lead acid battery has to be charged in a different way and then, and then has a float charge, trickle charge that keeps the battery up. Well, one of the things that I have learned over the years is those often overcharge lead batteries and will ruin a battery. I don't know how many times I've talked to people that have said, yeah, I left my trailer plugged in all winter long to keep my battery charged, and then it boiled my batteries out and they were ruined. And it happens often. With the BMS and the lithium, the, that will protect this battery from the charging system that's in my travel trailer because it can go up to 13, 13 and a half volts in a charge. Well, that charge won't go that high because the typical lead acid battery won't handle that. And when it gets up to that certain point, it, it should shut off. This doesn't need to be continually charged unless it starts to drop. That's where the BMS comes in. So technically, the Co charger converter in my trailer will only charge this up to about 80%. Well, I have a solar panel on the roof and my solar panel has a controller. That controller will, it has a feature where I can switch it to lithium. So it understands, oh, I'm charging a lithium battery. Now it'll top this off to the 100% level. That'll go the rest of the way. So if I'm plugged in camping somewhere and I'm off enjoying myself for two weeks and I have full hookups, I really don't need the battery anyways. I have a 12 volt refrigerator, so my batteries have to run that refrigerator. But if this battery is only kept at 80%, that's fine. I'm still over that 12 volt that I need. It's okay. It's not damaging the battery in any way to not have it fully charged. I'm not going to drain it because it's plugged in. So it really comes down to how you're planning on using your trailer. If you're always plugged in and have full hookups, you don't need to really worry about your converter charger. But if you're going off the grid and you don't have solar and you're running a generator or something like that, you want to keep the battery charged. So yeah. You might want to change your converter charger. Hopefully this will give you ideas and knowledge to make the decision yourself on works for you. But I'm really excited about these. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you go to my link down below, and I'll, and I'll post it here on the screen, uh, and then you use the checkout code coupon Ride 20, R-I-D-E-2-0. You'll get an additional 20 bucks off. So that really makes these affordable. And then you would also be able to see the other options for a larger battery or, or a Bluetooth or the other options that they have available. But I'm really excited about this. All right. Well, thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it informative. <laughs> Goodbye for now.